Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and boy, do we got a spicy news story coming out of the card world today. PWCC, one of the bigger auction houses involving especially like sports and collectible stuff, they have just been kicked off of eBay by eBay uh, with accusations that they were involved in shill bidding, which is, you know, sock puppet account bidding, propping up the price, whatever you want to call it. You guys are probably familiar with uh, the process. And uh, before I even jump into the story, let's just say other auction houses are accused of doing the same. And even if the auction houses don't know about it, even we're talking Sotheby's, Christie's, that kind of stuff, the real big names, they've been accused of shill bidding or knowing about it or looking the other way or not doing enough to stop it. Because even if they're out of the loop, who says the seller, the actual owner of the property, is not getting themselves or their friends to bid on it? It's a violation of the terms of service and you get a lifetime ban if they find out about it from what I heard. But are they doing enough to stop it and do they care? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, if somebody's propping up the prices, they can, you know, look at their history to you know, people that they're proposing their, uh, services to and say, look, we do not take hundred thousand dollar items and let them go for five. That just doesn't happen. We have the best marketing and the best network of contacts. And we have the best list of millionaires. And if you sell with Sotheby's or Christie's or PWCC, you're going to get the top dollar. I assure you. So like it, it is in their best interest to have the prices inflated. So they've been like at every auction house across the board, e eBay proxy bid, which is another one of their properties. You can almost just go ahead and assume that if it's expensive, important, or prestigious, that it's being shill bitted and it's being inflated. Let me just say real quick, throughout the investigation here, as you can tell, it 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 goes deep <laughs> based on the duration of this video. It, honestly, in the like the last 20 minutes of this video, I, I'm gonna blow your minds with just additional facts and stuff where, where I scratch the surface, look deeper, and started like asking people who are more in the know on this. Wow, PwC does not come out looking so good. So if you want to hear about what else they've done after just covering just this little latest revelation, oh boy, stay tuned till the end because uh, we go deep down the rabbit hole on this one. It gets really interesting and I, I gotta say, I'm really gonna pat myself on the back hard for the amount of effort I put into researching this video. I think I got the biggest, most detailed deep take on this. So if you're really interested in, in all this and going way below the surface, this is the video for you. And if you find yourself enjoying all of this uh, compiled information, leave a like on the video. That said, let's jump into it. So this is almost, I, I would compare it to like on par with, oh, wow, somebody in this professional cycling world was caught doping. Yeah, and the other like 50% of them too. Oh, I'm so shocked. I'm so blindsided by this. So to think that this is like, oh, I can't believe this was going on. No, you should believe this is going on. If anything, you should be surprised that they got caught. Trust me, I've been selling and buying on eBay for over 10 years. I have over 5,000 feedback. This ain't news, and I've even been tempted to do it myself. Okay, I posted a custom desktop on there one time. Apparently, I underestimated the softness of the used desktop market at the time. Everybody wanted laptops. It was a bad time of year to sell and we were talking custom cooling compact case full refurb upgraded ram ssds everything it was a pristine model all my keywords were perfect all my you know category the duration everything was perfect i'm not an idiot i know what i'm doing and this 250 dollars estimated desktop went for like 60 bucks i was pissed at the last second i was actually considering calling up my friend and having a machine bid it up to about 150 at, at the end of the day i thought one somebody's gonna come in and i'll bid them at the last second it's ebay and two it's not worth risking my entire account for my account is worth more than losses it ended up selling for 60 i shipped it out it cost like 35 to ship it and i was pissed i could have parted it out for more money than that but i just took the loss because it wasn't worth the risk well apparently Apparently PWCC sees it differently, mostly because of the reasons that I already said, which is the, the prestige, the whole, you know, they don't want the bad press of, of, you know, rumors going around where like people, you know, just drag their name through the mud saying, Hey, I sold my, you know, ultra elite super baseball card or first edition comic or whatever with them. And I got one tenth of what they estimated or what the market should have been. Don't use them. They don't know what they're doing. They, they don't know how to do keyword search. They don't know how to promote anything. Their marketing is crap. Their bitter pool is crap. Never use them because then that one item could cost them a hundred items in the future and then they lose money so it it's in their best interest to not let anything slip through the cracks and anything sell for a really low price so that's the motivation that's that's what the whole field looks like just so you got a little little setup from someone who's uh in the resale industry to say the least now here's the funny part i've never heard of pwcc <laughs> remember i've sold over a quarter million dollars worth of magic cards and other products and similar stuff i've actually had to request twice that ebay lift my limits and i have never heard of pwcc in my life Apparently a lot of people haven't, so I, I tried to look them up. They don't have a Wikipedia page, which, what? Just to frame this, okay, annually, Christie's Auction House does about 4.4-ish billion dollars worth of gross revenues and sales volume. 
Sotheby's does almost exactly a billion even. And PWCC, just on eBay, is estimated to have sold about $200 million worth of uh, product. So that's a fifth of a billion, and for one that kind of specializes in, like, you know, just collectibles and not, like, dumb antiques and stuff, as far as I know, I, I would know more if they had a Wikipedia page, that's pretty good, to say the least. Uh, I tried to go straight to PWCC's website to at least find out their company history or more about what they do, and basically it just intercepted me and said, take your VPN and, you know, shove it up your ass, basically, to paraphrase. And uh, if, if somebody asks you nicely to turn off your VPN... That is when you absolutely, under no circumstances, turn off your VPN. Although it's not like I, I think they're going to hack me or something. I mean, it's not like, oh, I downloaded a, some torrented, you know, copy of Photoshop and then it, it asked me, please kindly disable your antivirus before installing. <laughs> but let's just say I don't make a habit of turning off my VPN just because a company asked me to. So uh, I could archive.org their website. But, you know, at this point, honestly, I don't care who they are. Don't use them. And I could care less what their company stands for or what their history is because they're crap and they just got kicked off. Now, is this a cut and dry case? A lot of people are ready to just pile on PWCC and just bury them. Um, what I'm not seeing in a lot of the news stories and a lot of the social media commentary and stuff is... What if eBay was wrong? Now, I'd like to think, and we'd all like to think, that they wouldn't make a mistake on this caliber because, one, PWCC is already mentioning how they're going to sue them for defamation, basically. Uh, but also, $200 million in revenues? You know what? Like, 12% of that is in fees? A lot of money. Now, I mean, YouTube, they've accidentally deleted channels that have 10 million subs because of, like, a mistake or a glitch or an AI algorithm thing or some little minimum wage person who doesn't even speak the local language made a mistake, clicked the wrong button, or, you know, somebody, some bot farm, you know, mass reported, mass flagged some channel and all of a sudden they have strikes or fake DMCAs that they let slip through the cracks and now somebody's got two copyright strikes and are about to lose their whole channel. You would think that they could pay somebody $30 an hour to be an absolute trained with actual authority, actual knowledge expert to review these things before they happen. To just be like, a, you know, let me look into this for 15 minutes. You know, but costing the company $9 in, in labor revenues to double check that a 10 million sub channel shouldn't get deleted when their ad revenues make you like, you know a fraction of a million dollars per day. Apparently that's not in the budget. They, they don't see the, the, the value of the return on that, you know, spending $9 to prevent millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of losses because they accidentally deleted a channel that happens all the time. Facebook, they've accidentally suspended multi-billion dollar corporations pages because of a misinterpretation, a bot mistake, a reviewer mistake, an activist moderator, a mass flagging campaign, a bot attack. And then they just turn around and go, oopsies sorry four weeks later when you finally contact support and get it resolved you're like hello we're a multi-billion dollar company and honestly we're just gonna sue you and then they're like oopsies monday mistake sorry so yeah this ain't new having a giant mega corporation that's like at the peak of their you know market share make a mistake on this caliber it's every day bro to use a youtube meme so with that in mind could ebay have accidentally suspended them absolutely but i mean eBay is like releasing statements in coordination with this and they don't seem responsive. They seem like it was simultaneous. It was almost like a press release. So I'd like to imagine for eBay's sake, although they are an unbelievably incompetent company that just lazy, low effort, you know, their way through everything, basically. That's their company policy is do as little as possible, screw up as much as possible until it's really important. And I would consider this really important, but like I said, you know, we've got comparisons at YouTube and Facebook and Google where they made unbelievably huge mistakes and just oh well. I would like to imagine that they had a team of people look into this and investigate it or a third party like investigation or auditing thing or they had the FBI look into it. Like somebody really made sure this was correct before they pulled the trigger on this. Instead of what, what I could also imagine happening, some AI algorithm thought something was happening that wasn't happening. It flagged their account, suspended them automatically without human intervention and now they're doubling down on it saying oh well it couldn't have possibly made a mistake and they're just trying to cover their butts. Like, did, did it happen in a fully automated system that should have been probably be reviewed by someone, or it was reviewed by a human, but that human is a minimum wage worker who doesn't give a shit, and now they're just doubling down on, like, well, uh, I'm, I'm sure they're, they actually did what they're accused of because their company's perfect and we don't make mistakes. 
We'll see if eBay rolls it back, says, oh, I don't know, insufficient evidence, so we'll give him a second shot, blah, blah, blah. We paved it over. We worked it out. If we see that happen, I I'm going to go ahead and say that it wasn't an extensive month-long investigation from professionals and auditors and governments and, like, you know, subpoenas and court orders and... It's really only one of the two, and I wish I knew which one it was. So I'm just saying, let's not just jump on eBay's side and assume that what actually happened happened. So, uh... I guess let's just review the additional facts of the cases as the media is reporting it. And, well, first of all, holy crap, you want to talk about the media reporting it? Oh my god! It's been a couple hours, and The Sun has an article about it. Dual Shockers, Action Network, Sports Collectors Daily, Barons. And I'd say these couple just, you know, kind of scooped it or got, like, primary sources on this or very quickly copied each other. You give it another 24 to 48 hours for all the wannabe pseudo-reporters to plagiarize, I mean, write their own original content about this. This is going to be media circus. I mean, like, potentially billion-dollar company just got kicked off of eBay and they might collapse because of it. Oh, that's news. Oh, you're going to hear about this from the big ones. So eBay's official statement basically just said recently it was determined that individuals associated with the trading card seller, PWCC, have engaged in shill bidding, which is prohibited on eBay. So plain and simple, you know, we, we determined that that's what happened. As a result, eBay has restricted PWCC's selling privileges and listings effective today. eBay's policies and standards... Oh, oh yeah, eBay has standards. We're designed to ensure a trusted marketplace. Sure. Where our community can transact with confidence. Uh-huh. If we determine that a buyer or seller is not acting in good faith, eBay takes this seriously and takes action. Let me just add from personal experience, when it's big enough for us to give a crap. If they actually gave a crap about standards and confidence and anything about having a good reputation... They would have kicked off all the, you know, Chinese garbage sellers, the basically e-waste generators, the, the counterfeits, the stuff where it breaks in the first day, the stuff where they lie about the shipment and hope you don't catch it, and then they duck out and create a second name. If eBay gave any semblance of a crap, they would do anything about this. Stolen items, they do the bare minimum required by the government to, like, kind of flag them, maybe. Because why put in more effort to have less business? The, you know, that that's there, there's no upside to them. But they've always had the reputation since they became popular in the early 2000s of, like, you bought it on eBay, it's crap. It's unreliable, it's garbage, it's used, it's a lie, it's a scam, it's stolen, it's broken, it's misrepresented. And they've done not nothing but not enough to shake that reputation. So for them to come up with this statement like, we're the, you know, holier-than-thou company, we're so great, we are the pristine, prestigious, amazing, super, you know, auction that, that we're the platinum standard that everybody compared themselves to. Um, no, you're pretty much just a low effort, you know, automated crap company who doesn't give a crap, adapts ultra slowly to everything and never fully solves any kind of problems. And reseals, card scams, return scams, free card rentals, you know, Bitcoin equipment return scams, you name it. It's all over eBay. They're not doing enough to tackle it. And eBay is, they have the worst reputation as one of the most dangerous, stupid, incompetent, low effort, just garbage customer support platforms that you could ever possibly sell on. And you should go anywhere else if you don't solely care about the, the, the volume of bidders in the customer base. Why do you think Facebook Marketplace is blowing up so much? Because people are just like, give me anything other than eBay. Now, one more fun fact I want to inject is that eBay actually owns a company called Proxybid. A couple times when I was on Proxybid, a uh, very large Wisconsin auction house that I used to deal with, they decided that it's not illegal, so they're going to uh, basically shill bid. Now, they're not artificially inflating the, uh, the, the cost of the item or trying to rip you off. They're bidding because they might actually want it. Because, like, if my mom has a rummage sale and her friends and the neighbors and my sister-in-law all bring over their stuff, why shouldn't my mom be able to say, oh, I actually want that for myself and walk out and, uh, you know, buy it herself? Because she's just the platform. She's just the seller. But what if she thinks that's a good price and wants the item herself? Because, you know... Nobody else bid it or they're willing to outbid somebody legitimately, which is why I think they got away with it. Because uh, let's say a, a $500 item is going for a dollar. The, the company wants the super to be like, well, we'll bid too and we'll just hold it in our inventory, sell it at a different auction, sell it locally or, uh, 
sell it to a private vendor or do like whatever. And yeah, why shouldn't they be able to do that? It, it In some states, it's not illegal, Wisconsin being one of them. But what they had to do, because th this actually was within proxy bids rules at the time, I should say, um, excuse me. So when I went to bid or even sign up for the auction or watch it or like authorize my credit card to bid on it, they popped up a big window that says, even though it's not normally within the way we like to do business, the seller, the auctioneer, has indicated that they are going to bid on their own items. They didn't say shill bidding or inflate it or they're going to manipulate anything. They just said they want you to know, us to disclose to you. Well, I'm sure they don't want them to know, but we legally have to or feel within our terms and service we should let you know that they will be bidding on their own items. Whatever that means to you and however you want to take that. We just wanted you to be aware. Now, I think either a law changed or their policy changed or I don't know. I haven't seen that pop up lately in the couple auctions I looked at still from this company because, you know, a deal's a deal. But I try to avoid them as much as possible for various reasons. They're awful. Their management is awful. They, they can't spell anything correctly. They lose workers all the time. They've damaged my items. They've lost my items. They've given my items to the wrong person. They've taken incorrect photos. They've counted wrong. They've gotten model numbers wrong. Just you name it, they've done it. They're a low effort, low skill, just garbage company. And shocker, they decided to shill bid their own stuff to inflate it. I, shocking, I know, that a, a bad company would act bad. So that's my experience with shill bidding, but on literally a different eBay property, they were fine enough for it that they didn't even put it in their terms of service at the time to say, nobody is allowed to do this. They just pop up a little warning that says, hey, warning, they're doing this and we're letting them. We just thought you'd like to know. Comma, parenthesis, we're just saying this because then you can't sue us. So apparently eBay is a little bit softer on shill bidding than we thought. Hmm, nothing is really what it seems with this one. Now, I know this may surprise you, but PWCC, in a statement from their executive, said that they were shocked to hear the accusations presented by eBay. Are you really? Uh, so basically, they're mad that eBay hasn't presented them with any evidence, which, um, yeah, that is kind of rude, but I mean, save that for the court case. And they, they basically said, we're, we're looking into any legal recourse, blah, blah, blah. Just, you know, basically read between the lines. We're going to sue them for tortious business interference and damages and reputation harm, defamation, and blah, 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 blah. That's what somebody would say if they're in the right and eBay made a mistake. And that's what every single company ever has done when they're in the wrong. It's just like on Steam, you guys, if you follow the whole Steam drama, whenever some indie developer goes ballistic and starts threatening people, they always say, you left a bad review and I'm going to sue you for defamation. Or some, you know, companies found out to be doing criminal stuff and anybody reporting on it, they're like, take down this news story, we'll sue you for defamation. Let me just tell you from, from like a legal enthusiast, you know, hobbyist, I follow a lot of legal cases, uh, my standpoint, defamation basically never wins in court unless it is the most black and white thing you've ever seen in your life where somebody just literally made something up maliciously and then told you that they did it maliciously and, and then like laughed in your face on secret recording. Anything less, you're going to have a hell of a time. And uh, in general, good luck proving damages. Good luck assessing damages. Good luck putting a dollar amount to it if it's not statutory. And in fact, good luck getting statutory damages. Even in copyright cases, good luck getting statutory damages. So anybody threatening you with defamation, you can pretty much just blow it off. They're probably just bluffing and it's just manipulation, which by itself you could probably sue them for, which is kind of ironic. You know, corporate pressure, bullying, what they call slaps, strategic lawsuits against public participation. Yeah, most defamation threats are borderline illegal, if not illegal. But, you know, I'm not surprised that they, they, they're they taking that route because, duh. It's just what you automatically do, ask anyone. You're a big company, accusations came out, threaten everybody, make vague threats, or say that we're going to take legal action, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, nobody really takes anybody's side until they hear the evidence, I'd like to think. Although it's the internet, people are already dogpiling on them. Uh, do I think they did it? Yeah, I do. But do I think eBay possibly made a mistake? Oh no, they're not capable of that. Yes, I do. Yes, I acknowledge that's a possibility, but you know, come on. With the money at stake here, like I said, I'd like to think that they put some actual effort and investigation into this other than just, oh, we have a little bit of soft evidence, oh, whatever, we don't need your $200 million in revenue. They had just short of 18,000 live auctions as of uh, really recently. That's just like how many listings they had active available for bid at one snapshot in time. Now, let me just say, I, I've seen some high volume sellers. One especially was a, a company that sells seeds. I don't know if that was a legal thing or they didn't have the right labeling or it was like a, a not DNR, a FDA thing. Is that no a EPA? Maybe 
I don't know, whoever handles plant species in their sales or regulates uh, farming related crap, maybe they had something to do with it. Maybe they filed an injunction court order thing that said kick them off of eBay. Or maybe eBay just, they really didn't like something they did. I don't know. What One or two little violations, they'll kick you off. They don't care how big you are. And I have examples of that. That's why I wanted to say that. Like, eBay doesn't care how big you are. They just don't seem to. If it even appears that you broke some, some rules for the integrity of their platform and for just the fact that their entire platform is infested with bad sellers, almost exclusively of which are Chinese scammers. So a domestic American seed company getting booted, that was weird. And it's possible the owner just, like, died and then somebody just said, uh, death certificate, shut it down. All I know is their account was deleted. I don't know why. It didn't say it was removed by eBay. It didn't say that it was removed by the user. But uh, quite a few Chinese sellers that I uh, follow, they were shut down uh, right after I actually noticed this ahead of time that they had gotten a whole string of bad feedback. So I think they sold, you know, 50 defective products in a row and eBay was just like, mm -mm -mm, deleted their account. That's it. No warnings. No you know, do better in the future, just bye bye And we're talking these people probably did millions in sales. So they're not quite at PWCC levels, but I've personally seen what I would call like a mega seller, like a super high level seller get booted off the platform for what may or may not have been, because I don't have the full details, something kind of relatively small is something forgivable, I would think. But maybe, you know, the Port Authority said their shipping and counterfeits shut them down, you know, court order. Maybe the, the FDA said these seeds aren't allowed in America or they're mislabeling things or misrepresenting species or they're not maintaining a high germination rate. Uh, kick them off your platform. We're, we're pulling their business license. Because I know eBay also likes to sit back and not act until, like, a, a government or, like, a, the police tell them to shut something down. Like, force them to. Because they're very low effort, lazy, and, and very complacent with things that they know are going on on their platform. They just do the basic, you know, low level, low effort stuff to get rid of the biggest problems. And then the, the widespread ones that are harder to stamp out, they're just like, eh, whatever. At least that's that's what I have witnessed. I, I, it's not like I would you know, project that that's their corporate policy officially. Hey, maybe it is. I'm just saying it's lucrative. It saves money to not put in effort into anything. But I, I just want to really, really reinforce that eBay might have made a mistake here. I don't absolutely take them at their word unless they can back this up. And I think PWCC is thinking the same thing. But do I think PWCC was shield bidding? Absolutely. Pretty much everybody does it. So the last thing to really point out here is what type of shield bidding was this? Because you could play hot potato, but it can get very expensive. So let me, let me explain. You got a $10,000 item and it's about to expire and it's going for $500. Well, that's a disaster. You need two bidders, and just by random chance, not that many people were interested in this obscure first edition comic from the 90s this week. I guess you just didn't send it out to enough people, or just by random chance, you just didn't get enough interested bidders, and it's about to be a disaster. Well, you yourself can get a, a partner, a shill bidder, a third party, your family, your grandma, whoever, to bid it up. And then you just cross your fingers and hope you don't accidentally get the winning bid because you're pretty confident that the interested bidder, whoever they are, it's anonymous on eBay and you also don't know what their ceiling is because obviously you can't see that. Oh, AK, their max bid, that's that's auto bid. But a huge portion of the time, if you're going to you know play chicken with the bidding system, you're going to accidentally end up with the item. So then instead of, oh, look, we inflated it to save our, our, our company, our reputation, and not have, you know, people going around saying, oh, my $10,000 item only sold for 500 If that's damaging enough that you bid 3000 or 10000 or 8000 and accidentally got it, and you'll just eat the cost or sell it privately later or, you know, shift it to somebody else who pretends that they bought it, changed their mind, and sold it three months later, it gets relisted, and then you get rid of it, and then, you know, offer them no fees, which is what I heard how all this shill crap works. Okay, I can see the business model working, but what I think they probably did was they started a whole bunch of auctions at a dollar, but then to make it look like there's a whole bunch of hot interest even day one out of ten, they just immediately put in a bid or two bids, like one bid for a thousand, one for nine hundred, so it looks like boom, 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 look at all these bids and everybody's all bidding each other and wow, it already hit a thousand, whoa. And you might be thinking, but Des, why don't they just start it at a thousand because nobody will see it. Trust me, it is this weird psychological marketing thing that is so established and so proven, I absolutely do agree with, yeah, it's a thing. If you take a $10,000 item and start it at a dollar, you're going to get the attention of, we'll just say, a thousand people where they're like, oh my God, look at this, it's a dollar. Everybody hits watch now. Well, that actually will tell the eBay algorithm that people are interested in it and they should kind of show it to more people and maybe prioritize it a little bit. Maybe show it on the homepage as a hot item because, you know... Ever likes the whole, ooh, look at this big prestigious thing that sold on eBay for a large dollar amount. Wow. They like to show off once in a while, I'm just saying. 
And also, if something is, you know has a lot of uh, uh, action on it, they're like, well, let's get even more action because this is our opportunity to not just have something sell for 20 bucks, to have it sell for a ton of money. So let's show it to everybody. So you're going to get more algorithmic traffic to it if more people are watching it and more people are going to watch it if it's a dollar. And if they get more bids and, and more individual bidder counts... Because what if somebody's like, well, I mean, I'll pay $100 for it. And somebody else is like, well, I'll pay 50 for it. It's worth $10,000. i am not even interested in buying this. But, like, I know it's worth $10,000. Fine, I'll put in a bid for $200. And then all of a sudden they see 15 unique bidders come in and drive it up to, you know, a tiny amount. That is going to look really good. It's going to attract attention. And then people who were, like, kind of had their foot in the door, like, they might have bought it for 5 maybe. They weren't exactly shopping for it. But they saw it for a dollar. Well, now they're watching it. Now they already have a bid in. And now they already kind of... In their own mind, they already own it. They, they're already kind of, it's a foregone conclusion that, oh, what if I get this? Oh, this would be so nice to have this. And then psychologically, by the time it got bid up to 5,000, they're like, you know, I would pay six for it. Whereas if you listed at 1,000, they're like, yep, that's worth 10, but it's starting bid 1,000. Okay, whatever. Who cares? It, it's like the, the already invested or like the sunk cost fallacy, except for cost, it's like work and attention. You get a bit of like FOMO. You get what do they call it? The buyer's high, buyer's rush, buyer's impulse. There's always these things where if you started at a dollar, you're just going to end up at a higher amount than if you started at a thousand for various reasons that I kind of breezed over and gave you the ultra quick high level summary of. So what they would probably do, in my opinion, is not just be like, oh my God, we're nine days into this 10 day auction and this isn't high enough, quick, inflate it. Because like I said, they're going to get stuck with the item. They could get caught. They don't know what the only other bidder they're bidding against is, is willing to do. It's very dangerous, very stupid. It's not out of the question, but what I think they did is they started a whole bunch of stuff super turbo low, let it go for a day or two, and then jacked it way up with, with you know, one or two or three shill accounts. Now remember, what, from eBay's perspective, AI is a lot cheaper than humans. It does a crap your job, and we're like 100 years out from self-driving technology, no matter what Tesla says. And the most impressive thing I've seen is IBM Watson, and even that's, you know... Not as great as you might think. AI can't even really, you know, detect voices that well or what's in a photo. Trust me, AI is not as far as you think it is or as high as the tech giants like to kind of project it is. But it's pretty damn easy to say, oh, this seller has had the same buyer bid on 1,000 of their auctions. They always bid about this far into the uh, auction and they have literally never won an item. They always bid. They always bid kind of mid-range and they never win. I mean, just a statistical analysis system would just, you'd hit a threshold where it gives somebody an alert, they review it, and then they're like, yeah, they're probably shill bidding. They might send a warning just to tell them to stop, just to be like, hey, we're on to you, you know, cut it out. Or they might just suspend the person's account, or they might suspend the seller's account, or they might investigate further. They might look into like, where does this person live? What? Is there social that they have on file for tax reasons? What is their, you know, PayPal account shipping address? And... Is it at the headquarters of the auction house? Like as if they would be that stupid, but you never know. Or maybe like a, I, I've heard of a statistical analysis. Uh, I think even eBay did this where they were like, why do people keep bidding on these items for this person's account when they live in the same city? I wonder if it's just one of the private accounts of somebody who works there. I wonder if it's a family member. And by I wonder, it, it means, yeah, our AI system already did like a zip code analysis and yeah, it's happening. So they have all these systems that can like real quick pop up a red flag if somebody makes a pattern of behavior that is very distinct. And shill bidding is very distinct and very easy to detect. At least if it if it's uh, often enough. I mean, you, you sell a million items and do it 10 times to just salvage 10 items prices, they ain't going to catch you. You do it a thousand times and as like a general just way of doing business, oh, you're getting caught. Now, if this shill bidder occasionally got burned by the hot potato, they were the last in and they accidentally won a bunch of auctions, it's just going to look like a rich person with an account that likes to bid on expensive crap a lot and occasionally they win. That's a lot harder to detect. So what I'm thinking is that it's the second type of shill bidding. It's not the emergency prop up bidding. It's the artificial, oh, look how popular this is kind of bidding, you know, so that they can start it low but still protect themselves. And like I said, this just on the basis of that being easier to detect. So there's there's a lot to unravel with this. And luckily, um, I, I'm making such a long video about this which a with a lot of details because I know about this stuff. I've operated in this world for at least 10 years. I know how they do things. I've heard of press releases and problems and government, you know, complaints about eBay. I read all the tech news. Like, th this is my scene. 
I know, two for two in two days of me just happening to know a ton about a story. The last one was a copyright one. Check that out. I know a lot about copyright law, and I'm able to finally weigh in a lot more than these stupid little 10-paragraph articles and other YouTubers who just read the article and don't know what they're talking about. No offense to them. Half the time I read an article and don't know what I'm talking about and just kind of form it into a video. That's what everybody does. But luckily in this case, oh my God, I'm basically an expert on this. So if you appreciate the deep dive into this, I mean, leave a like on the video, definitely, and uh, subscribe if you feel like uh, some more good content might be coming down the pipe. Uh, so there's a couple more twists I want to throw in at the end here because, you know, it wouldn't be a good news story in a big dramatic, you know, criminal enterprise racket or whatever without, uh, well, basically PwC was already allegedly moving to a new platform and now they, they basically in their statement just said, well, this is just going to accelerate us moving to a new platform then. So they're kind of wink, wink, nod, nod saying eBay knew we were moving. So they're accusing us of this or they like found a reason to kick us off just to like do the most damage possible because they knew we were moving off of eBay anyway, because everybody's moving off of eBay. They just up their fees. They're awful. It's been, you know, 10, 15 years. And they've never really gotten that much better at customer support. They always side with the buyer. They never side with the seller. And there's so much fraud, especially in high-end items. If I was PWCC, I'd move off of eBay. Maybe PWCC made you know, disparaging comments about eBay and said, we're, we're going to move off them as soon as possible. We're moving away from them as a business model because of nonstop constant problems and they're incompetent and eBay fired back with, okay, we're going to accuse you of shill bidding and kick you off. Or we're going to investigate you really closely and we found uh, two out of your, you know, 18,000 auctions where, where we think maybe somebody shill bidded. Well, that's enough to kick you off. You know, maybe this is exaggerated. Maybe this is basically manufactured backlash, punishment, uh, coercion, I mean, whatever you want to call it. Basically just revenge and being petty. <laughs> Would I put that behavior past eBay? Um, should I just start laughing? Would that tell you my opinion on that? Now, the other funny thing is you might think that eBay actually gives a crap about losing uh, $200 million in revenue, which is what the estimated sales volume is in, in a given year. Uh, from this one seller? No, this is not going to affect eBay's bottom line in any way. I mean, they're multi-billions in, in sale. I mean, to say even multi-billion would be low. To, to think that one-fifth of a billion is even a blip on their radar, eBay almost has a higher sales volume than Newegg. At one point in history, not too long ago, they were rivaling what Amazon did. Well, in fact, obviously at one point they were beating Amazon in revenues. Or I should say sales volume, not really revenues, but like total sold volume because obviously it's not all their money. I mean, I can't find their sales volume data. I don't know if that's even public information. But their net revenue, their profits after operating expenses, which is, you know, um, almost exclusively from eBay final value fees that they take from the sales volume, it was $10 billion. So I think it's safe to say they probably have at least $200 billion in sales, probably more, probably closer to a uh, half a trillion. But then again, I think the U.S. only takes in like $10 trillion in tax revenues total, and that's all taxes of every citizen. So, I don't know, saying half a trillion runs through eBay, that, that even seems high to me. So it's probably somewhere between, I don't know, $100 billion and $500 billion, just to ballpark it. So to lose $200 million, eh, not much. Now, also, the rumor is that they upped their fees lately, not just because they thought they could get away with it. Everybody already thinks their fees are too high. It's because they're not doing as well lately. Allegedly, their profitability is shrinking. That's not the numbers I'm seeing, but maybe, like, some other metrics aren't looking good and, like, it, you know, stockholders are pulling out or something. I don't know. Basically, just the, the rumor is eBay isn't doing as well as they were in past years. Now, they've got excuses that everybody just blames COVID for anything, even though, in theory, eBay would be doing better because everybody's staying home, but... Okay. I mean, early 2000s with gas prices were like four bucks a gallon and it just cost double to send everything through the post office and FedEx. That was a reason for it to go down. But lately they don't have a reason other than, you know, Mercari, I think, which they, I assume don't own. That's a high competitor, Facebook marketplace. That's been chipping away at their business. So would they maybe want to now, given all the circumstances, lose a $200 million, you know, volume seller? Probably not. So for them to say, oh, it's not even on our radar, which I mean, they're not saying that other analysts are saying that I, I don't think this is an opportune time for them to be, you know, whether scrambling and doing these last ditch efforts to like raise fees, even though they know it'll piss everybody off. Would you want to lose, you know, that many millions of revenue? I'd say no. So that's why I'd lean towards they were kind of cautious in this case. Here's another twist. PWCC is the subject of an ongoing FBI investigation, like separate from eBay, I would guess, that has lasted more than two years. Uh-oh, so the FBI was already looking into it. eBay might not have even been the one that caught them. The FBI might have just said, hey, here's some evidence. Do with it what you will. And eBay's like, oh, hell no. Delete. I mean, it could have been an IRS audit. 
that triggered an FBI criminal probe. I mean, like, I don't think eBay was even behind this. But as far as I've heard, the investigation is still ongoing and it's, you know, it's not done yet. So it's like, would they even tip off eBay ahead of time before it's even done? Is it about to conclude? I mean, we don't know. There's a lot of we don't know here, but I just thought you should probably be aware of that. Now here's another thing. They were involved in card trimming. What's card trimming? Another thing I haven't heard of in addition to the name PWCC. <laughs> There has been apparently a lot of bad press around PWCC. In fact, their founder, Brent Hugens, didn't even show up to the latest uh, National Sports Collectors Convention in Chicago. And the rumor is it's because, well, I guess the company doesn't have the cleanest reputation. It's kind of, you know, people know that there's been an ongoing FBI investigation. And whether people are jumping to conclusions or it's just people already knew about this and finally the FBI is catching up. I don't know. I don't know the corporate history, but you start stealing millions of dollars from, you know, large card collecting companies and millionaires and stuff, you, you start to wonder if maybe your safety, if you go out in public and be right around a big group of them might not be safe. I know if somebody stole like a hundred thousand dollars fraudulently from me, I would take it rather personally, not going to comment on what I would maybe do about it, but you know, you guys know me. I mean, I'll give you a hint. It's not say, oh, well, and move on with my life and hope they don't do it again. So, uh, by the way, this card trimming thing is uh, allegedly what most of the FBI investigation was involved because it's, you know, it's product fraud. It's a large scale. It's high volume. So just to set this up, uh, PSA and the other graders aren't as, as, as great and prestigious and precise as they claim to be. They're actually, they rush through stuff. You know, they don't sit there with a microscope and analyze something for eight hours because for the, what, $17 you're paying them, that ain't profitable. They, they, they do really rush through things and they miss things. So uh, if you have a card with a bad border, it has, you know, thumb marks and, and rubber band marks and wear and, you know, whatever. And they're like, well, that's going to get graded a seven. And they're like, I wonder if we could uh, take an ultra precise cutting blade, like a machine or like a computer guided thing, laser guided, whatever. I mean, you guys know there's like metal lathes and CNC machines out there that can do one thirty thousandth of an inch. So they'll, you know, take some specialized equipment and uh, chop off just the damage section. And oh, look, an absolutely precise fat Factory quality edge. Look at that. And I'd love to throw PSA under the bus because I don't really like them as a company. Um, I think, you know, for the $17 you're paying them, I, the, the whole impression that they're going to have, oh, a team full of white lab coat scientists, you know, running every test imaginable. They they test this under a microscope and lasers. And, uh, for $17, they aren't doing that. I hate to break it to you, but they're, they're kind of rushing it. They're still the best out there, but they're not as good as they say they are. PSA makes mistakes, okay? But in their defense, even if they do bother in some cases or all cases to check, you know, the width of the card and compare it to what it should be, they might have cut the edge so precisely that it's still barely within spec of the tolerances on what we'll just say Magic the Gathering cards, which the cutting machines they use at the Texas facility are complete and utter ass. I mean, we've seen the, the cutting alignment be off by like half a centimeter. Now, a card being too wide or too short, I'd like to think that that's a little bit less rare, but still, they don't use the most precise of cutting blades. So if you cut off, you know, 100 microns, is PSA going to say, well, that seems awfully narrow of a card? That's probably still within expected spec. Who knows? I mean, it's not like they're using laser-guided high-precision cutters at the damn facility. They're just using, like, a quick stamp cutter that goes ding, 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 ding down the, you know, the line of... Uh, uh, what do they call that? Um, uncut sheets, you know, full sheets. And I mean, they got a hundred million cards to pump out. Like they, they don't have the time to precisely cut it. So if you can't prove that a card's a little bit too narrow and you just wonder if it came out of the factory that way, well then you can't prove that they recut or, uh, trimmed the edge. That's why card trimming, you know, as expensive as it may be on a large scale is insanely profitable because you can just sit there and get PSA tens over and over and over for a card that was very played and very damaged, at least on the edges. I remember surface scratches, bending, that kind of stuff is also a thing. And even the initial, you know, the ink quality and the, the color hue and stuff is, is, is actually important. But if you can up something from an 8 to a 9 or a 9 to a 10 or even like a 4 to a 7, oh yeah, you've got money. That is well worth the equipment if you do it enough times. And PWCC, well, I've told you about their sales volume. So if they're already willing to commit fraud... I wonder if they were also willing to shill bid considering almost every auction house ever an auction company is also accused of and has potentially been caught in the past shill bidding. Hmm, what an interesting and dynamic mystery we've got on our hands. Yes, of course they did it. In my opinion. Now here's the other fun thing. PWCC allegedly has a sweetheart deal with eBay because of their sales volume where they have like a special agreement where they do not pay the same like 11.9% or whatever the hell we're all paying at this point on eBay in fees because they just, they wouldn't accept that. It's not worth it. 
Uh, the rumor is in the industry, people who are in the know say it's between one and 3%, which is, you know, three to four times lower. eBay would almost just do it for free, just for the prestige being like, look, we, we handle $50,000 items and really all the auditing and security and returns and fraud checking and all that is done by the actual auction company because eBay, uh, let me just say, I would never sell something above $1,000 on eBay because you got about a 50, 50% chance of getting scammed and eBay does not have your back and there will be no recourse and you'll just be left with the loss i don't trust ebay now pretend i'm pwcc and i'm selling like million dollar items and like ten thousand dollar rare stuff on a regular basis oh i don't want to get return scammed so they probably had special preferences special authority and all this stuff where they're just on ebay kind of but it's more of a business partnership than just oh we signed up for ebay oh we're totally disconnected from the staff there hell they probably had a, a an actual sales representative like like an agent over there like you look at like the Linus Tech Tips channel on YouTube, 13.8 million subscribers. They have like an agent, a contact, a, a representative at like NVIDIA and at Intel. And you know, that's just how you do things when, when two companies are big enough. So I think this business relationship is very established. They know each other. They've worked together for a while. For, so for them to end it, yeah, it could just be drama, could be backlash. But I'd like to think the evidence was strong enough for them to just take the whole thing and be like, no, we're suspending you. And say that eBay had very good evidence, especially with the FBI investigation ongoing to something awfully similar. Because, like I said, what if the FBI uncovered that they also suspect their shill bidding in the sole investigation system, and they just kind of let eBay know on the down low, you know? Uh, here's another interesting factor. They just keep coming as I gather more data on this. They had, allegedly, a contract with eBay. Like that special one to 3% terms, that wasn't just like a gentleman, you know, agreement. Like that's not how you do things. You sign like a one-year contract or a five-year contract or whatever. So basically eBay has now also like broken a contract, not, not illegally, not, you know, not backed out of it or, or whatever. I'm sure it said in the contract, if you violate terms or violate the law, the contract is null and void bye-bye. But they had like a special separate legal agreement with these people to sell on their platform. Or at least that's that's what I'm hearing. A lot of this stuff doesn't have sources and citations and crap that I can like look into, but that's how the industry does things, so I have reason to believe that the people all reporting this got it from a reliable source. Here's another fun one. PWCC was using all these loopholes to avoid paying sales tax by running like everything through the state of Oregon. They've done that in the past. It was kind of like a, you send it to us and now it's our property. Then in this state, it doesn't have sales tax. So then, you know, this was before the whole, you know, where the buyer is sales tax law, obviously. But they'd be like, oh, it's not a consignment and we're not selling it on their behalf as a service. It's our property. Yeah, sure it is. I'm surprised they didn't get hit with tax evasion, to be perfectly honest. But uh, I've seen companies do more egregious things and it's just considered, oh, well, it's a loophole and the government looks the other way. So, uh, okay. So uh, the last thing to cover is, I guess, statements from eBay and PWCC up to uh, what we're just hearing about early today, Tuesday, which is like a day after this broke. eBay's, you know, they're making all kinds of statements. They're being vague and they're, they're just, you know, offering a basic level of like why they're gone, but they're not, you know, going nuts with it and just absolutely being like, here's a PowerPoint presentation on, you know, everything they did, their whole criminal enterprise or whatever. But they even went so far as to say, our customer service team will work directly with anyone who has a question about a recent PWCC transaction. They probably have like a separate department or like a sub-trained um, customer service department to deal with this just because of the volume of money and the legal issues. So maybe if you contact support and you're like, hey, I was involved in a PWCC thing and I think I might have been ripped off or like, who do I contact? Do I sue them? Do I go to the government? Is this going to go class action? Are you going to refund me? Are you going to extend the 90 day thing? Can I still file a return even though their account is gone? These are really important, like $50,000 questions, for example. So I think uh, they might have some staff who knows what the hell they're doing, like an actual team of people handling this. Or you'll get the runaround from some dumbass low effort uh, foreign, you know, contractor who doesn't give a shit about any of this. AKA the other 99.9% .9 of eBay's garbage pretend support staff. They honestly just follow like like a decision tree and they put absolutely no human effort into it. It's it's just pretend humans. It's real humans, but they're just following a script. There's no decision. There's no arbitration. It's just keep it simple. We don't trust any of our workers. They barely speak the language. No offense. I'm just saying that that's just another barrier. I don't mean like anything, you know, bad by that. Yeah, I'm not a fan of eBay's customer support. They are truly and sincerely awful. But for this one, like I said, they're, they're, they're stopping just short of implying that they put together an entire team to deal with just this. So obviously, if you've been affected by it, contact them. Uh, it, uh, let me just say from experience, call them between 8 and 5 from U.S. Central Time uh, from an American telephone. 
you will get the best results from that. You will get the, the most barely almost competent staff members. Out of the hours or via email, oh, God help you at that point because they, they aren't even going to understand what your inquiry was about. All they care about is I have to solve five problems per minute and I sped through it and here's something from our knowledge base. Piss off. Marked as solved. Next ticket in the ticket system, please. So getting back to uh, statements, let's look at what PWCC said. PWC was shocked to see eBay's email today stating that unidentified double quote individuals associated with double quote PWCC engaged in double quote shill bidding double quote. Could you look like more of a scumbag lawyer by putting everything in double quotes? You've got to be kidding. It's like, you're almost like, what, what, what even is shill bidding? What does any of this mean? What do you mean associated with air quotes? Oh my God. Hire a PR person. So they go on to say, to PWCC's knowledge, its employees have never engaged in any behavior that violates eBay's agreements or policies. See, that's the whole plausible deniability where they could probably just throw two or three employees under the bus and claim that the corporate structure and the higher-up people didn't know they were doing it. It was just the actions of a couple individuals and blah, 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 blah. Now, if they did it, it was widespread at the corporate level, I assure you. I mean, unless there's, like, like commissions involved and it was, like, a commission scam thing where they had, like acquisition agents that work on commission like that I could see but then like if you know that it's going to be so likely to be fraudulent and so likely to be abused wouldn't they have like a better auditing system or something themselves or do they just not care do they just look the other way you know that's what I'm saying I think at the end of the day no matter what the case is they knew about it or they kind of knew about it softly as in suspected it, but didn't look into it. You know what I mean? Because, hey, higher prices are higher profits. And higher prestige. It's all about really everything that starts with the letter P. Well, speaking of P, I'm pretty sure you just got kicked off of eBay. So, whoopsies. So, why did I just mention that, that I think they're going to th throw individual employees under the bus? Well, because they've already kind of tilted their hand here and said, PWCC goes to great lengths to ensure that its employees... Hmm. Follow eBay's rules and PWCC employees, there's that word again, do not have access to eBay's bidding records or information. Uh, here's here's a, a point I should bring up. You don't need access to bidding information or records to shill bid and pump something up. You just need to look at publicly what the damn price is and how many you know, minutes are left. That whole statement is just... Plausible deniability, dancing around the issue, getting ready to throw individuals under the bus. It's its the most transparent thing ever. It's not them coming out and saying, we absolutely assure you we have auditing in place. We have our own you know, evidence. We check this regularly. We would never do this. This is absolutely abhorrent and it is impossible. We assure you eBay is wrong. Okay, that's what you would say if eBay was wrong. All this bullshit I just read is what you would say if eBay was absolutely correct, in my opinion. So basically, I would just summarize, they just went on to call the, the eBay's actions defamatory and they're considering all available legal options, like I mentioned before. Uh, there was a further comment from the actually that says, PWCC has only just learned of these allegations and eBay has refused to share any details supporting its allegations. So they're just, oh, we haven't seen the evidence yet. That's another thing you would say. Oh, it must not be true because they didn't send us the evidence for us to review. Wouldn't you say something more like, uh, we don't even need to see the evidence because they've made a mistake. Because this did not happen. Nah, it sounds like, uh, really, you think you did this. They go on to say, despite eBay's unwillingness to explain uh, its claims, PWCC will continue to conduct its own internal review, oh god, to ensure that its employees have not violated eBay's rules. I'll be honest with you, I hadn't read that one yet, and yet I already said they're preparing to throw a couple of their employees who clearly did this under the bus. Whether they knew about it or instructed them to do this or not, they're going to shift the blame to not their entire company and try to probably get back on eBay or save their reputation. Or, you know, they'll fire a couple people, say it was their fault, and then just, you know, try and clean it up and then probably end up five years later doing the same damn thing. This is standard criminal corporate, you know, ways of doing things is you... You find an employee, pin it all on them, say it was out of your control and you, they, they, they totally blindsided you, but they're gone and everything's fine now. That is how you get out of a corporation doing something knowingly wrong. Absolute salvaging your multi-million dollar business 101 right there. 
Uh, one more interesting fact that I actually just found out. They only had a, a, an estimated 17,000 lots on eBay, but on their own platform that they're setting up and, and like, running from, I guess, their own website or something. And this might include, like, in-person private auctions or, like, you know, phone-in auctions, live auctions, that kind of stuff. But uh, the volume there is 37,000, so roughly double. So two-thirds of their items were already not on eBay. Did they know they were about to get caught? Or did they just start pulling out of eBay, eBay's mad, and eBay now kicked them off based on very, very soft evidence? I mean, I, I could see it each way, but I'm still very heavily leaning towards PWCC is absolutely guilty. And I'm being told that the, the setup of their, their own little private platform is a very recent development. I don't know how recent, but it's very recent. So to see why eBay would be mad when they have like an existing sweetheart contract with them and then they went outside of eBay anyway because oh one to three percent is just too much apparently. I could see how they would be mad about that. But you know, then again, it's it's barely a blip in their, you know, half trillion dollar sales or whatever. But with that said, these are one of the absolute largest sellers volume-wise on the entire platform. So okay. But now here's the thought. If you have a sweetheart deal with eBay and you're only paying one to three percent in fees. Why would you move to your own platform? Why would you try to build your own giant e-commerce mega site? That's expensive. And the answer is, well, honestly, eBay is just that freaking awful. But the other answer could be so that you can shill bid and get away with it. If it's your own platform and you run it, oh, you want to talk about <laughs> being able to cover your tracks. Now, if you're wondering uh, what their statement about why they were moving off of eBay is, and they actually made this recently, while well, PWCC became the world's premier site for the sale of trading cards using eBay's platform, in recent months, eBay's increasingly competing interests, whatever that means, prompted PWCC to begin the process of moving on. Uh, today's unilateral action by eBay simply hastens PWCC's move to its new platform. Uh, do you think you could issue like a follow-up statement that's even more vague? eBay's increasingly competing interests. What does that mean? Favoring like Chinese sellers over them? I mean, that's the big complaint I always hear. But that's usually like electronics and like, uh, I don't know. I, I, it sounds to me like, oh, they were onto us about shill bidding, so we'd start a jumping ship. I mean, that's what it sounds like to me because they, they started rolling out their own platform apparently only months ago. According to them themselves, I imagined it had been a process over like the last two or three years. Apparently not. Wow, they got that together quickly. In fact, I don't think that they built their own e-commerce you know, infrastructure from the ground up like I mentioned earlier. They probably just rolled out a different third-party like auction you know, code or like a third-party software, like web software provider. Because nobody can, can you know, take 37,000 listings off of eBay, move them to a private platform in, quote, months. That's hard to do. If you're coding it all yourself and designing it all yourself. I mean, honestly, they could have just went to their own damn website and set up Shopify or something. I mean, I have no idea. I would actually really laugh my ass off if they moved to ProxyBid, not knowing that eBay also owns ProxyBid, but I doubt they did that. I could check, but like I said, they're blocking my VPN from their website, so their website can go to hell. So part of PWCC's stated defense is that they are sick of the level of fraud on eBay, if I were to paraphrase. Uh, the, the number of like return policy scams and the significantly not as described issues and like what it should be. Apparently, PWCC claims that they were responsible for the recent card changes made by eBay that I've been covering over like the last six months with the whole the return window shrinking and the well, I was going to say the, the shipping envelopes that are ultra low volume, but that would be for like people selling four dollar cards. So I don't think that was them and then the whole hey sell your collection easily because now our ai camera app uh on the you know the ebay app on your phone can detect what card it is and fill in all the information for you that probably wasn't rolled up by T pwcc so i wonder how much push they really had in all the trading card changes and rule changes that have been applied to just the trading card category lately on ebay but they are um claiming responsibility for the return scams and and you know pushing ebay to uh clean that up i know ironic that they would want fraud cleaned up and then also shill bid allegedly that's that's interesting but they say besides just the recent stuff they've been working with ebay over at least 10 years to you know do stuff about bid retraction scams and probably i would also assume fake bidding they didn't mention that but like you know whatever somebody like a famous youtuber tries to like auction off something for charity like oh i i you know destroyed this thing and graffitied on it and now i'm selling it to raise money for a children's hospital 
people will have fake accounts. They'll they'll bid. It'll get up to ten thousand, and then won't really get there. And then you got to relist it, and then and then the hype dies down. It sells for less, and then eBay will sometimes let you kind of like offer it to a different person who was like second in the list, but then they have to make an exception. You have to work with support. Basically, if you try to auction off something important on eBay that has a lot of focus and it's coming from like an influencer online, for lack of a better term, it's gonna blow up in your face. And one hundred percent of the time, pretty much, it is going to result in fake bids and bid retractions and all this and then you have to like mark it as a protected item but you can only do that on the relist because god knows ebay doesn't want us to just know what we're doing and say ahead of time this is going to be a problematic item because you know i'm a big famous you know tiktok or youtube or whatever and this ain't my first rodeo i already know this is going to be a problem no ebay doesn't like let, let you mark it as like please check out the buyers and scrutinize them closer on the first time around only the second time around. And like I said, the second time around, it doesn't have the same focus, doesn't have the same hype around it. So I can see why PWCC also doesn't like the fact that there's uh, you know bid retractions and fake bidders on all of these high items, because if they have to start all over and remarket it and apologize to the legitimate bidders and say, Oh look, it, it's back up again. It makes them look bad, but it's all because of eBay and them not vetting the, the bidders correctly. So yeah, over the last 10 years, they probably have been a major force uh, telling them to like get their crap together and start like making people like post, you know, bonds and upfront and pre-checking, pre-running their credit cards and verifying their identities and stuff like that before even allowing them to bid, which is what they've been doing. So cool. Don't care. You were shill bidding. Bye-bye. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it's, it's interesting. That's, you know, that's their defense is that, Oh, we're the ones telling you made to clean it up. Mm hmm sure. Just because you were doesn't mean you weren't also inflating the prices. So that's about all the details in this absolutely, like, very deep rabbit hole convoluted case here that we're only about a day into. Um, I'm almost definitely going to make a follow-up if we get more interesting, you know, statements from either side, or uh, especially if, like, actual evidence comes out, or if criminal charges come out, or if we get a result very shortly after of the FBI investigation into the trimming thing. Which, uh, one clarification I should probably point out is that they, I don't think they were ever accused directly by the FBI of doing the trimming themselves, but I also don't think that they were also the victim of people trimming cards and then, like, they didn't know about it and they were selling them because where would the FBI investigation have come from then? Unless it's not the FBI directly investigating them, they're just trying to work with PWCC to see which sellers did it and where they are so they can catch them. So I, I don't really have the full nature and details on that FBI thing, but I, I earlier in the video, I, I kind of probably made it sound like, oh, PWCC is sitting there with a chopper, you know, and, and they're improving them, sending them in for grading and then auctioning them. I mean, that might be what was going on, but not necessarily. One of their own statements was from a long time ago is that they're working with the FBI to determine how and where these issues originated, which isn't that what you'd say if you yourself were doing it, but like still... Now get this, get this, that was a statement made by their lawyer who was like helping them defend and work with this case, and he stopped representing PWCC at the end of April. <laughs> that's the cherry on the top of this, so that's why I wanted to circle back to that, because I just found that out, and I'm like, oh, when your lawyer drops you, you are guilty. The end. In my opinion. Haha, <laughs> you thought I'd miss that one, didn't ya? And you know, this blanket coverage, pretty much everything in this video is my opinion, just FYI. So yeah, that's all the details we got so far. Um, can't wait to hear if anything else happens here, but uh, I would just say that even if we never get any hard evidence, nothing else is disclosed, and this is the last we hear about it, I would never, ever buy anything from PWCC's private website. Holy crap. Even just the accusation, unless they can like prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that they never did anything and that ebay was wrong just saying ebay was wrong and then never trying to get back on ebay never actually suing them never succeeding in a defamation case because that would involve a lot of discovery which would make ebay submit their proof and then we'll let a court decide if that never happens if pwcc never gets in any way legally or criminally vindicated in any kind of court of law then i'm just gonna assume that they're shady as hell and that between the card trimming scandals, the FBI investigations, the lawyer dropping, the vague statements, the fact that they're getting ready to just throw employees under the bus and keep operating, the fact that they're already moving off of eBay, it all adds up to just they are shady as hell, do not buy from them. That, that's just the direction that I think the wind is blowing in my opinion, so I would never ever do business with them ever again. And I would recommend you guys do the same, sparing any future information. But that's just my advice, you do you.
Oh, uh, if you're on the fence, by the way, and you're like, eh, maybe I'll trust him. I don't know. Uh, this is just one thing. Um, in, in 2018 to 2019, they've been accused of knowingly and possibly even PSA was like in on it because they do so much business with them. Although I, I find that a little bit more suspect. But they were accused of knowingly. Well, in fact, they, they it was proven that they knowingly sold altered cards and they just hid behind a defense of, oh, it's a preservation technique, not uh, not trying to cover up damage or you know do this or that or a uh, recut or whatever. So they, they've got a long history of trying to like repair cards and then get them graded higher. And then people automatically jump to the conclusion that PSA was in on it. Because, you know, how could PSA be fooled? Well, I mean, you know how many counterfeit Civil War items get past expert reviewers? At a certain point, it's just not reasonable to expect them to catch everything. But then again, if you do millions of dollars worth of grading, you know, with a company and you're like, we're your number one customer, maybe you'd have a little pull. But then again, if people start accusing PSA of like knowing that cards were repaired or altered or cleaned up or some damage was masked or, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. They've there have been individual uh, issues with that. Uh, it really all sprung from a Mickey Mantle card, as far as I know, where it was graded like 4.5, which is not that good for PSA. But uh, people pointed out when they saw like the high res scans and stuff, they're like, well, this still shouldn't have even qualified for a 4.5 or like this, you know, category. Cause they have the categories of like visual appeal, cut, you know, edges, etc. Uh, people were like, well, this clear as day has been altered. And everybody in the sports world watching this was like, take the auction down. You assholes. They didn't, they refused. Basically people were saying we have strong evidence that the grading is wrong. It's false. And whether PSA knew about it or not, now you know about it, pull the auction. And they just kind of leaned on, well, I would assume, well, but it was graded by PSA, so kiss my ass. And also, it's a preservation technique. It's not a repair, it's a preservation. Which, you know, maybe they had a point, but then people, because of this, people were really, really, really angry in the sports collecting world. Uh, they decided, let's look into some of their other items. You do not want thousands of angry Redditors looking into really anything because they're going to find shit. And, like, within, you know... A very short amount of time, they're just like, oh, it's all this guy in New York named Gary Moser, and he's altering cards, and he's the one behind all this, and traced it all back. I mean, like, the Reddit Bureau of Investigations <laughs> makes the FBI look like shit. They get it done, okay? They're like 4chan. They are motivated. When they look into something, they're going to get the deets. But uh, yeah, this Moser guy, he had a real close relationship with PWCC. Uh-oh, it's almost like they're all in on it. So the scam was he'd buy low-graded cards, take them out of their case, repair them, or preserve them, and then get them regraded. And I guess the fact that he literally bought the card, like this ultra-rare limited edition, you know, card that only comes up for auction every two years or whatever, bought it from PWCC, and then later turned around with, oh, look, I have a higher-graded one. I wonder where I got it. After I just bought it from you. If you're going to do fraud, you don't sell it on the same platform that you got it from in the first place. Which is why the, the theory among the community was that um, 100% they were in on this. Uh, but then also the owner of PWCC purchased some of the cards personally, which is even more evidence that they ran on it. Especially since, oh, well, they went into his own personal collection. He got ripped out. No, he sold them personally on eBay himself. Oh, now one last piece of evidence that I just uncovered with the whole shill bidding thing. Uh, this leaked out from just the community, not any kind of formal source, not the FBI, not eBay themselves. But allegedly there was a leaked screenshot of, of a message where PWCC encouraged one of the consigners to inflate the price by shill bidding on it themselves. Don't know if it's real. Don't know if it's not. People wanted to bury PWCC. Could have been manufactured. PWCC seems awful and fraudulent. Could have been real. Just saying. But uh, when you got a screenshot, I mean, I could make one in Photoshop in five minutes too, but I always lean very slightly towards, well, looks real to me. Now, PSA is like, okay, they're the most trusted, they're the most respected for grading, by the way, but um, Beckett, which is complete and utter ass, in my opinion, uh, they had suspiciously high numbers of really, really, really high grades coming out from just PWCC cards, like statistically impossible ones, if you believe the community. So that's another time PWCC was accused of fraud. It's, it's really starting to make a profile, isn't it? So the more I kind of look into PWCC's history and reputation and issues with like just the community, the collector's community, just random like social media groups and stuff, the worse it gets. So I, I ugh, boy, I gotta say, does not look good for them. And they're almost definitely guilty. When you have this long of an established history of just constantly ripping people off and being accused of fraud and being accused of insider stuff, it just starts to paint a picture. That's all I'm saying. So, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this little mini documentary that I pulled out of my ass within 
half a day of this uh, story breaking, just saying, yes, I'm going to pat myself on the back over this. I did quite a lot of research. I interviewed people. I talked to people. I sent messages. I went back and forth. I jumped on Discord. I talked to professional card collectors to gather some of this information. I mean, I went to multiple news sources. I went to eBay themselves. And I got this all together because this is just a huge thing. And also, I kind of always wanted to run a news uh, channel where we, like, do big deep dives onto, like, investigatory stuff and all that. And this this is huge. But it's card related instead of politics for once. So I'm like, oh, I'm covering this. So uh, leave a like on the video. It's the least you can do. And I'll see you guys next time.